and a Merry Christmas to all of you. What a beautiful way, right, to begin our worship with such fantastic music. And we are so grateful for all of our musicians that are here offering their gift of music. And there's going to be plenty of opportunity during this service like there have in our afternoon services for you too to offer your voice and, and sing on this Christmas Eve. So welcome to this worship. Know that it is a candlelight worship. So you might have a candle close by. Otherwise, here's plenty of warning for you to to grab one so that at the end of worship this evening when we sing Silent Night that yeah, you can turn all your lights down and light the candles as we do so across our screens and in our virtual time together tonight want to say that we have a Sunday, or yeah, Sunday worship, yes, every Sunday at 10 a.m., but I also want to say there's a Christmas Day worship tomorrow at 10 a.m., so you are always welcome to all worships right here at Christ Lutheran, so that's tomorrow at 10 a.m. and Sundays at 10 a.m. Give thanks for your being here tonight so that we can celebrate together. Also give thanks for all the ways that you support and continue to sustain Christ Lutheran Church and its ministries through the gifts of our Christmas baskets to coming out to our parking lot event a couple weeks ago to all of your financial gifts. They, again, help to sustain the ministries here so that God's love and God's light can continue to spread out into all the world. Um, and maybe some of you saw on the, the news channel tonight that uh, Christ Lutheran was part of the KSTP service of saying, we as churches, as faith communities, even though we might not be able to gather in person, we know that indeed the light of Christ shines brightly in and through all of us. So as we continue with worship today, we continue with a 
litany. It's a responsive litany like we often do. And so when you hear me say we pray, please respond with let every heart receive you. On this blessed Christmas night, we rejoice for our loving God has sent us a savior who is the light of the world, wonderful counselor, prince of peace. On this night, prince of peace, draw us all to the manger. We pray, let every heart receive you. We gather with the shepherds in wonder. On this night, wonderful counselor, draw us all to this wondrous birth to kneel with the kings, bringing our finest gifts. We pray, let every heart receive you. Emmanuel, live within us forever. Let us remember your birth and your love for us by bringing healing, peace, love, and joy to those around us and into your whole world. We pray, let every heart receive you. This night, with the multitude of heavenly hosts, we sing in praise of Emmanuel, God with us and God within us. Let's sing. Tonight, we come to worship our loving God, our God who refused to be confined to the heavens, and a God who longed to come to earth to be with us, to walk with us. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and was born of the Virgin Mary. Love came down this night a love that would bring us comfort and joy, a love so profound that nothing will ever be the same again. As we prepared to meet the Christ child again this year, 
We also bring our failings, for heaven longs to forgive. Heaven longs to make all things new. Emmanuel, God with us, we praise you for sending the prophets and heralds who told of your coming. Strengthen us to be followers of the light of the world, healing and forgiving, adoring and praising you with our lives. Amen. Tonight, we light the last candle on our Advent wreath. Tonight, we proclaim the hope that inspires us to keep moving forward in our journeys. We recognize that peace that extends from our souls goes out into the world. We celebrate the joy that fills our spirits with excitement. And we herald the love passed between Christ and us and between our neighbors and us. As this Christ candle is kindled, we celebrate the compassion which will overcome hatred and kindness that will overcome isolation. To an imperfect world, Christ comes. To people who are living in darkness, Christ came with light and salvation. He comes to live among us and he gave his life for us. Dear Christ, welcome to our world.
The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You've increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exalt when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a child given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the Holy Gospel taken from St. Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Son of God the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, it'd be great to just start with Merry Christmas, but my goodness, I know so many people need to be thanked for how we got to this evening at 10 p.m. worship, candlelight worship. We cannot thank enough all the staff that have worked so hard and all the volunteers that have worked so hard to make the ministries of Christ Lutheran Church and Christmas come alive. So please join me in thanking them. I am deeply appreciative of everyone's efforts. And this candlelight service is somewhat special. It's somewhat different than all the other ones that we do. And it is definitely different this year. Um, it is strange to be in a sanctuary with no one but staff and knowing that there are those at home. So I do hope that you've gotten your candles ready for later in the service. But tonight we're gathered to wish one another a Merry Christmas. And last Christmas, well, it seems like it happened several years ago, didn't it? which has us all just reflecting on the reality that it has only truly been 365 days ago. See, last Christmas, as the year began, it was daunting to wonder what the virus might be like. Will it only be in Europe and Asia? Will the virtual virus landscape we see there soon be here too? But as we all celebrated Christmas last year and Winter seemed to run like normal, and plans for Easter had begun. Then, what should not have felt like it came out of the blue, out of nowhere, the effects of a global pandemic made itself known in all our lives, 
in a variety of ways, yet all in very direct, personal ways. And what was just a year ago, last Christmas, can feel like, oh, so long ago. And all that we did to prepare and participate in last year's Christmas is so very different this Christmas. Well, anything to try and make something feel normal out of something that is so extraordinarily not normal, that is today. That is tonight. That is Christmas 2020. And just maybe this is exactly the right year to read again the first stories told of the most unlikely pregnancy and birth journey that we have in Christmas every year. Might this year's highlight a political census by the government? Travel for a couple nearing labor by donkey or camel or four-legged all-wheel drive creature? Arriving to the inhospitable, unsanitary birthing site of a stable? Yet all pointing ever more poignantly to the extraordinary nature of who became flesh and why? That is the Christmas story. That is why we are here tonight to worship. What is all this faith and faithfulness about? What is all this faith in? How does hope pierce through all the uncertainty, the disease and the death, the decay and the brokenness, that a year that has been as long as this year reveals in each of our lives, our homes, our communities, and our faith in Jesus of Nazareth, born to Mary and Joseph in Bethlehem. I came across an Irish tradition, a blessing. Well, actually, it's for New Year's Eve, but I thought it fit well for this year's Christmas Eve. It suggests just before midnight, like right now, one ought to go and open their back door to their home and let the old year out. And then go to the front door, open it, and let the new year in. It then offered, as the people do this, might they also greet their neighbors? What has this year taught us? This year is just not all that different than all the years before it, times before it, that all point to the extraordinary means to which God will go to be a part of all our lives. For moments in time, and for times just like today and every day. For this is the gospel truth of this night. The unexpected of daily living with all we want, hope for, and too often falsely desire, it stares back at us in the mirror-like glaze of an infant's eyes. With our incredulous look at what should have been a savior, but lying there, really, it's just a helpless homeless, straw-messing, screaming child in a manger. Definitely not fit for a king, nor a prince of peace, nor a mighty savior. That's it? That's all you got, God? We needed a miracle. And a miracle is what we got. We received the one gift we all need, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Every year, the Christmas story reminds us not so much about what we have personally done right and wrong any given year, how good or bad we have been, which list we did or did not make. The story greets us every year 
in a world that is in a mess and needs to find a way out. An open back door that leads us to open a front door and teaches us over and over and over again to greet our neighbors. The Christmas came at a time of political unrest and social unrest. Israel was once again a conquered country, living under the domination of the Romans, ruled by King Herod, a cruel ruler. When Christ came, there was hunger, hunger in hearts, hunger in homes, hunger in stomachs. Social injustice and war was raging upon the innocents, all in the name of such things as truth, justice, and national security. Then, just as now, the old values had become skewed and obscured and unrecognizable, and no one knew whom they could trust. And it is into such a world God sent his own Son. The message then, the message now, is that we are not alone in the midst of the world's evils, nor our personal private demons or struggles, nor our unempathetic brush-offs or cruel ways. God comes then and today to enter into our distress, front and center in our loneliness and despair, isolation and distancing, God in Christ Jesus is right in our messy midst. There in our stable with us, staring back deeply into our souls, a concrete, tangible love, infusing itself in the world and in our lives. A hope-filled form of new life, new birth, a front door from which to greet all that is yet before us, allowing us to let go through the back door all that binds us and holds us captive. God's love for us and God's grace for us held perfectly in tension in a child lying in a manger born for us, Emmanuel, God with us. Merry Christmas is not a dismissal of any and all messes that bind us. Merry Christmas is a faith proclamation of the miracle of Christ's birth, God's own life in flesh, that our life, our flesh, would rejoice with God and all creation in God's miracle. All we need, we have. God did not come in order that we can have parties and give gifts. Christ did not come to reward us for being nice or to save us from being naughty. God in Christ came to show us the love and care of God in the midst of our messy, deadly, and dangerous lives. Jesus is born, took flesh, God incarnate, to show us how to live and how to die, to teach us when it is good to open the back door before we can open the front door, leading us all to faith, a faith in which we would live into being God's people, a reflection in God's image of God's hope, healing, and greeting one another as neighbor. It is an ancient story then and today that tells how it is that this child born to us will die on a cross for us to save us from sin, death, and evil. It is peace for our unrest. It is indescribable joy in our life and our living. And it is hope in all that is yet before us. And that is a miracle, a story worth telling year after year, regardless if the year flew by unexpectedly 
or dragged ferociously clawing at each of us at every moment of the journey. See, God's gift is delivered and is not dependent on us, but infused into all creation by God's love for us. For unto us a child is born, who is Christ the Lord, Prince of Peace, Mighty King, Creator of life and all living things, now and forever. It is in receiving this news that we shout, Merry Christmas! And greet one another in such life and love, all to unexpectedly wait to consider what is God up to next? Amen and amen. Merry Christmas. imagine the humble place of Jesus' birth. We can only imagine what it must have been like to look on this baby in the hay, knowing that he is God's only son. This night, we give thanks for Mary, who with great courage said yes to God. We give thanks for Joseph, who in the face of ridicule, loved Mary and raised Christ as his own. And as their child grew in years, they found themselves in the temple as their child Jesus was teaching. And the Holy Spirit came and rested upon Simeon. And Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and he will be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many may be revealed. And Mary, 
Well, Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. We continue in a time of prayers of intercession where at the end of each petition when you hear Lord in your mercy you're invited to respond with hear our prayer. Let us pray. O oh God the shepherds sing Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, as we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, we know that everything in this world is a gift from you, O God. So we humbly return a generous portion of these gifts to you. We pray that our gifts may help this congregation to change people's lives and to spread your message of love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of the babe lying in the manger, we now join our voices in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever and ever. Amen. This year is no different. We invite you, if you are at home, to, to lower your lights now and light your candles. Um, and maybe light your candles first and then lower your lights. But... Uh, as you are doing that, I am waiting as Chance runs around feverishly here in the sanctuary getting the lights. Uh, you'll notice that soon you won't see much of me, but you will see the candle that I am holding. That normally, as we all gather in this sanctuary, I and Pastor Sarah usually travel to the center of the congregation to read the Holy Gospel from the Gospel of John the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become the children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. You came as a baby to a manger. Continually remind us how good you are at blessing the ordinary things. Help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. 
and grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Susie is going to go to the piano for a final postlude. Merry Christmas, everyone. I think we'll bring up the lights just slightly on the piano. <laughs> <laughs> 